Hi guys, welcome back. In today's tutorial, we are painting the ephemeral nature. Um, as you know, I love to paint organic forms like flowers and leaves. And in this tutorial, we're gonna focus on some of the stranger ones like feathers, mushrooms, pine cones, and more. So let's get started. So today I am starting with a bunch of small pieces of watercolor paper. If I do a larger piece and some paper is left at the bottom, I like to just rip it using a ruler and make these fairly straight little squares and they make wonderful scrap pieces for doing little projects like these ones. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do, since I'm gonna consider all of these little paintings sort of one project, is to paint a color palette. And this is something that I'm trying to do more often, is to sort of choose the colors for a project before I get started. Just helps me to be a little bit more organized and deliberate. So just a thought, I don't know, <laughs> color palette. All right, so here I'm jumping into the feathers. I'm just making the shape of the quill. Um, in pencil, so I sort of have that as a guide and then I've mixed up a little bit of very very light gray watercolor paint here I'm using a number six synthetic round brush my favorite <laughs> And then I'm going back in with some extra water and I'm sort of bleeding or blending that initial line out just a little bit and Then I'll go along the other side of the quill with a bit of that dark gray again again a <laughs> grun and I'll just um, add some more detail so it looks like the highlight is right at the top or right at the middle of the quill. Uh, and then as I start to paint the feather, you can see I'm literally feathering the paint out. I'm just doing these very, very light brush strokes, allowing lots of negative space, allowing the paper to really come through so that in some way I do capture that very, very ephemeral, delicate nature of the feather. You wanna do this portion with a fairly dry paintbrush. Uh, it's not quite dry brushing, but still dry. And then what you'll do is if you wanna add some color to the feather, and this is really fun, you can go in and just sort of add that color, allow it to bleed out into the wet strokes, the brush strokes that are already there. Then you can guide that paint with your brush and move the card, move the paper around. So if it feels more natural for you to pull the brush quickly towards your body, then turn that paper around so that you're pulling the brush in the motion that's easiest for you to sort of get that shape and look of the feather. Uh, and here I'm just adding a little bit more gray paint and I've added a bit of blue to the gray. So now I'm working with these beautiful bluish gray that really ties the whole color palette of this feather together. Again, just keeping my brush fairly dry and I'm gonna let that one dry while I paint another one here for you to see and we'll get super close up. So starting with the quill. So just start with the, the very middle, allow there to be a little bit of a highlight on that quill if you can manage it, but that's not a super important. Be aware of how much paint is on your brush. You want there to be a lot of paint in the belly so that it flows easily through that delicate tip, but you don't want so much that you can't get these beautiful, fine, delicate strokes and move the paper however you need to to get those beautiful, easy flowing strokes. I'm basically just working this one into the shape that I'm happy with, and then I'll go ahead and add some color to it as well. And I want to take a second to say thank you to Audible for sponsoring our video today. Audible is the leading provider of audiobooks and other spoken entertainment on the internet. I love listening to their books and podcasts when I'm working in the studio. You get to do two things at once, and it's also just very relaxing. One of the books that I listened to from them recently was Alice Munro's Runaway. Now, if you're a writer or an artist, any creative really, I think what we're all trying to do with our work is to answer the question, what is it like to be alive? And Alice Munro just happens to do a pretty amazing job of answering that question and telling that. Um, so check out Alice Monroe's Runaway as well as their many other audiobooks and podcasts. Right now you can get your first audiobook for free and choose two titles from a list of Audible originals when you try Audible for 30 days. Visit audible.com slash Shada or if you're in the US you can text Shada to 500-500. Audible originals are exclusive titles and podcasts created by all kinds of storytellers just for Audible. One example is Wes Cork. So if you are in need of a new crime podcast, which I always am, you might want to check that out. 
Now the last step with these feathers is set them each aside for a moment, work on a second feather, and then once they've dried slightly, you're gonna go back in with just a little bit of that darker gray or blue or brown and just add a little bit more detail. So just these very tiny, delicate strokes, you're gonna do them just with the very tip of that round brush and add a little more detail there. Um, this would also be nice to go back in again once all of this has dried and you could either scrape away some paint to show a little bit of the white paper through or add some white gouache which is an opaque water-based paint um, that's a little bit thicker than watercolor. So just some more ideas but those are the feathers when they are all done. Okay, and then we're gonna move right along. And since we did feathers, which were kind of crazy and just a little bit intricate, we're gonna get a little loose, loosey magoosey, and we're gonna have fun just paint some leaves. Another thing that we do all the time, but sometimes when you do something brand new or a little bit tricky, it's nice to go back and just have some fun. And personally, I'm trying to get out of my comfort zone here. I have a bad habit of using my number six round brush for everything, and I go through them really quickly because I expect that the one brush to do all the things which it obviously can't so today I'm trying to use my big old fat wash brush and um, just you know slap some paint on the page and see what kind of shapes develop and you can see these kind of crazy leaf-like organic shapes developing here and then I can go back in with the brush that I'm super comfortable with the number six round and just add a little stem throw some more paint, put that wet into wet paint and let, allow the, the other color to sort of seep into the initial color and just let everything be really loose, really organic. Don't try to guide it too much. Um, maybe put a little extra paint or color along one side of the leaf um, and add that little stem. But other than that, you don't have to do much. You know, use a larger round brush or a wash brush and just let the paint hit the page and see what happens and try not to guide it too much. I tend to overpaint and as I always say somewhere in these videos I'll see that everything looks great and then I see myself keep going. So that's the benefit of video recording. Now for this last one, I'm blending red and green. I love the brown, the mossy greeny brown that the blend of red and green, those uh, opposite colors on the color wheel, that beautiful blend that they um, achieve. It's just a nice sort of dead green, like a fall green. Uh, so just having a little bit of fun and mixing up my paints. And yeah, these are just my loose leaves. And now we'll move on to something else. I thought it would be fun to paint a pine cone. So uh, this one here, it goes in threes. I start with my little floret of three at the top and then three sort of round blobbity blobs and then three larger blobbity blobs and then drop down again and then you got it, three more <laughs> blobby type shapes. And then to finish off, we'll do uh, sort of like three adjoined bigger blobs. So you can, I think you can already kind of see how this is uh, coming together and I'm trying to use my larger brush here. Again, I'm trying to go with these more organic shapes and just let stuff happen and do the very loose watercolors. Now I'm taking a darker brown and I'm sort of putting little caps, little hats on my blobs <laughs> and uh, I'm letting the paint just seep out and yeah, I'm just doing it very, very loose, but I think you can already see how the shape of the pine cone is emerging. And I'm just gonna keep going along here and I'm adding a bit more dark paint to the top bits of each of these. You could also do this in reverse. I'm not quite sure why I made the lower part lighter. Perhaps it'd be uh, smarter to do it the other way, do the underside darker and the little hats a bit lighter. But either way, the pine cone shape is there and we're gonna set that aside, let it dry up a little. Now this one is partially dry and we're gonna come back and add a little more detail. So this is great uh, when you're working Working on a few different pieces simultaneously, it's a good time to get to know how long you like to leave the paint before you want to add some more detail. So I'm going back and forth, I'm sort of toggling between the leaves and the pine cones and I want the paint to be still a little bit wet so that the detail I add 
um, with the new paint seeps out a little so that it still looks organic and loose, but that it doesn't just run into that first layer of paint. So I'm able to add some extra detail, but I still get that beautiful, loose, whimsical watercolor look. And that's just all about your timing and doing pieces and going back and forth between pieces like this can really help you to get a good feel for that because it is just something that comes with time. And you can see on the pine cone here, I'm using a vertical painting stroke to add a little bit more shape and character and just that look of the pine cone. And as it dries even more, I can add ever so slightly more detail and more delicate details. Okay, I'm done with the pine cone. So the next thing that we're gonna tackle is some mushrooms. Uh, I just love painting organic shapes. So if I'm not painting flowers, I'm usually painting like vegetables or mushrooms, pine cones, feathers, all of these things. So we may have covered mushrooms on the channel before, but I'm starting out here by simply drawing them on my watercolor paper. Now I've got too many lines there, too much graphite, so I'm gonna erase um, some of the excess sketching and just have this really, really light layer of pencil when I get started. Another way to kind of beat having a bunch of eraser dust and pencil is to do your sketch in a sketchbook and then transfer it using tracing paper and graphite transfer paper. Anywho, I'm just starting with some very light brownish gray and adding that to the stems of each mushroom. And you can see I've tried to leave a little bit of a highlight on each stem, a little bit of negative space. And people often ask, how do you know where you should place the highlight? And that's totally up to you. You're the artist. So you sort of make up a pretend light source. And for me, it always sort of feels natural to have the light coming from the right hand side or straight on. So here I'm pretending that the sun is shining on these mushrooms from the right. And you can see that the left hand side of each stem is a little darker, whereas the highlight is always on the right-hand side. So really simple, you just pick left, dark, right, light, <laughs> um, or vice versa. And I'm adding this nice mossy green, just doing some quick, simple vertical strokes uh, to make it look like a bit of grass. And some of them are a little more detailed and then some of them kind of all bleed together and have that nice watery watercolor look. Um, so just sort of using a bit of, bit of detail, but also a bit of messy watercolorness, I think is always nice for these little whimsical pieces. Now I'm gonna take that light, light red or the pink that I did in my initial color palette and I'm going to start doing the top of this mushroom. And I'm using this technique where I'm just going very quickly and lightly with the tip, tip, tip of that round brush. And I'm allowing the brush to sort of skip over parts of the page so that I get this really delicate and very organic looking spotted pattern at the top of the mushroom to indicate uh, spotting on the mushroom. And I'm sort of using the fly agaric mushroom as my, um, as my model, as my muse. Uh, these are mushrooms that we see here in Eastern Canada at this time of year, and they're really orange and yellow and red, and they have these wonderful uh, white spots, like something out of uh, Mario Land. So that's what I'm doing here. And then I'm gonna take that a little bit of a darker color and go along the top of the mushroom. Um, and then of course, adding a little bit of more darker color on the left-hand side again, because of my light source being on the right-hand side. To complete this piece, I am using a sort of mustardy yellowy orange to finish the other mushroom. And I'm using that same technique where I'm allowing the tip of that round brush to sort of dance across the page. I'm moving quickly. I don't have a lot of paint on the brush and I'm just allowing the brush to kind of skip over areas of the paper and it allows that beautiful natural spotting to occur. And I get that nice negative space. And then I'm just adding a little bit of a darker yellowy mustard mustard color to um, give that mushroom a little more depth. And just adding that extra shading will really make your watercolors pop. You know, you want them to look like they're just coming to life on the page. Um, and I think just adding a little bit of shading can do that. So to finish my fall watercolors, my feathers and leaves and mushrooms, I decided I would add a little bit of 
a black sketchy line. You guys know how I feel about the pen and ink with the watercolor. It's something that I always go back to. I just love the look and uh, so that is what I am doing today. Now when I do the leaves, I like to just give them this very, um, very whimsical, perfectly imperfect shape and just sort of go around, leave lots of paper showing through. I don't want the pen line to match up perfectly with the painting. I also like to do a double line on the leaves because I don't know, it kind of gives the feel of motion, like the leaves are floating or flying through the air. Um, and then with the feather, I am gonna follow the painted lines a little more closely. Um, and I'm just gonna add some extra detail with my pen here, my black pen. So not going overboard, just adding a few sketchy lines, outlining the quill, but um, these look equally pretty without adding the black line. So if it's not your thing, I say just leave it. And as I mentioned before, these feathers would do really nicely with a little bit of white gouache added as a highlight, or if you scraped away some of the paint and allowed the paper to come through, that also gives a beautiful look. Um, so same with this feather, just adding that little bit of detail, sketchy, quick lines, nothing too crazy. And then with the pine cone, I am going to treat the shapes um, sort of the way we painted them. So each hat <laughs> that we painted, I am going to um, sort of encircle it completely. And then for that bottom bit, I'm just doing some vertical pen strokes to sort of show the look of the pine cone or the way it grows. Um, it's still very whimsical and very loose, but yeah, I think that's that's the pine cone. I was pretty happy with it. And then this is another one that I did off camera, just a, you know, just it's sort of as if I was painting a collection of things that I would find on a fall hike. So I was just into that sort of painting fall shapes and fall colors with these mossy greens and the yellow okra and uh, the walnut brown. So yeah, just adding my black lines and that's about it for the mushrooms. Oh gosh, I don't know if I should have done this. Maybe I should have left the mushrooms without the black line. I mean, those delicate um, spots, the white spots on top were just so cool and perfectly imperfect, but they do really, the mushrooms really pop as well when you do add the sketchy line and add even further shading. So I don't know, you guys let me know what you think, black line or no black lines. What do we need? What do we want? What's best? <laughs> okay, that's everything for this week. Um, I will see you next Friday with a new video. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and patrons head over to patreon.com slash Shada Campbell after the video because there is a special feather greeting card printable over there for you. See you next week.